Congressman Mark Pocan. Pocan.house.gov, his website, the uh, Democrat representing the set, second district of uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> Momentary brain fart there. Pardon me. Congressman Pocan, welcome back. Hey, Tom. Thank you very much. Appreciate being here. Great to have you. Uh, Shane and I have been talking. Shane was in the Supreme Court this morning uh, listening to the arguments. Um, I'm curious your take on on what happened before the Supreme Court today. Uh, what's your What's your take home on this? Well, you know, my hope is that uh, courts, and for that matter, the legislative uh, bodies that we have at the U.S. government level will uh, catch up with the public on this issue. You know, the most recent polling has shown 58 percent of the people uh, in the state of Wisconsin, I'm sorry, in the country, uh, are supporting marriage equality. And among 18 to 29-year-olds, uh, we are literally... Uh, at 81 percent uh, of the people are supporting that. So clearly the public has already made a decision on this issue. Right. We just need to bring both the courts and our legislative bodies ahead, and I think that's why it's just so important that we're debating this yesterday. You the know, it, 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 Justice Roberts today was arguing that there has been lobbying by the gay lobby, and that's why suddenly there's been this sea change in public opinion. I'm of the opinion that a lot of, of gay people made the, the very, very difficult decision that, uh, for example, you made to to just come out and say, "Here I am," and it is it has caused uh, people to say, "Oh, in my family, my friends, my acquaintances, but you know, straight people," and and I think that you know there has been just this ex- you know this explosion of coming out going on for the last you know decade and a half or so, and that is what's driving public opinion. What's your take on that? Well, there's no question. Yeah, you know, when someone knows someone, uh, they're most likely to be uh, supporting equality. And I think, you know, the fact that uh, more and more people uh, have come out, uh, it's, it's been more mainstream in uh, popular culture. Uh, when people really understand that it's nothing more than two people who love each other and want to make a commitment to each other, and it's no different than any other marriage, uh, we're, we're winning support. And I think that's really been the quest. So, you know, there's no question. Uh, people coming out and talking about this issue has made it so much more popular in the public. Yeah, I, I agree, and uh, so much popular. It made may made more popular the idea that gays should have every right to marry, just like straights do. On the one hand, and on on the other hand, has made it less of a consequential issue um, for things like uh, as a barrier to jobs, to elected office, things like that. No, exactly. Now, there's still you know we still have uh, a lot of struggles to deal with to get full equality you know, from uh, really needing um, you know stronger employment non discrimination laws and. Uh, other things, you know, the marriage issue seems to be uh, the biggest, most significant issue because if we can really talk to people uh, about why uh, people should be treated equally, equal protection under uh, the Constitution, it really sends a much stronger signal. And I, I think that's why this fight is so important and this week has been so important. Yeah, I agree. I, I think this has the potential to be the loving versus Virginia, you know, the end of miscegenation laws. This is this. Well, we'll see how it plays out with the Supreme Court, but it certainly looks that way. Congressman Pocan, a lot of our listeners and viewers remember you as the guy who was a state legislator in Wisconsin who who was on our program as you were uh, infiltrating the uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, the uh, yep. you know the, the this organization uh, that that has gets together a couple times a year where they bring all these mostly Republican legislators in with uh, lobbyists on one to one basis and and write laws for America. I'm curious, uh, you know, got any updates for us on on how the keeping track of ALEC is going? Well, I'll tell you what I'm. I couldn't be more proud of a group right here in Madison, Wisconsin, the Center for Media and Democracy. Uh, has been the watchdog uh, nationally. They have uh, alecwatch.org, uh, or, I'm sorry, alecexposed.org is their website, but they are the continual uh, organization that's keeping an eye, and now there are more and more legislators doing what I had been doing, Tom, uh, just kind of uh, reaching out and exposing uh, what they're doing state by state. With the 2010 elections, the Republicans were in control of as many majorities uh, as they were at their peak in 1928. That's why they've been so uh, aggressive, but they've also been overstepping and just taking these bills without doing any changes and just introducing them. Uh, and I think uh, we're having some real success uh, between the Trayvon Martin case and uh, the coalition now that's behind here. We're, we're really getting out there to the point that we're exposing them and making it a lot harder for ALEC to operate like they have in so long. Now, ALEC has been you know, working with the Republicans to use things like racism and, and fear to, to gain legislative victories with the so-called stand-your-ground laws, although you could argue that there's a commercial interest at stake there, which is, I guess, really what ALEC is supposed to be doing is you know, supporting their lobbyists. Um, and, um, and the voter ID laws, you know, let's not let black people vote. Um, I'm 
curious. Do you know if 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 uh, if uh, if they have been if Alec has been involved in any of the anti gay marriage laws? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, technically, they don't get involved in social issues, uh, but when you go to the conference, and I was just last year, I was at the one in Salt Lake City. Uh, you know, they have booths for the NRA. They have booths for a number of anti-choice uh, organizations. They have booths for uh, the the traditional marriage uh, group that's out there. Um, so they they clearly are marrying the two concepts through the the conference, just not necessarily in their workshops, but they they know that the power that they have for uh, corporate wealth is to marry the social conservatives with uh, those who are just trying to um, take advantage of the system uh, financially. So uh, it's it's tied in, even though it's not necessarily part of their model legislation, uh, it's definitely part of their conferences and, and how they bring people together. That's amazing. This is this is the, you know, uh, uh, Tom, I'm forgetting his last name, wrote, you know, What's the Matter with Kansas? And, yep. and uh, you know, what's the matter with Kansas is that scared white people, by and large, are being, you know, frightened by these, these uh, you know, right-wing conservatives to vote against their own economic interests. And, and Alec has been leading that charge. It's, it's, it's really quite remarkable. Um, now, now, the next step, though, to watch is, uh, at least I've noticed it, and I've tried to talk to some folks about it, is we notice there's a new group, and I'm forgetting the name of it right now, out of Alexandria, Virginia, that is basically a clearinghouse to take all the groups that quit funding Alec. Uh, they can now give money to this group, and then it makes nonprofit donations um, to uh, or makes donations to groups like uh, Alec and other conservative front groups. Huh. And it's a way to launder their money so that they're not directly giving it to a group like Alec. So uh, we are trying to also keep an eye on that, Tom, because... Uh, That's this great. It's a backdoor way of funding it. Uh, we can't let that happen either. There you go. Congressman Mark Pocan, fighting the good fight, pocan.house.gov. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Tom.